Welcome back to my Susan Mallory plotting method, part two. Hey there, I'm so excited to be back for part two of my Susan Mallory plotting vlogs. If you're interested in checking out the first part, I will put the link in the cards above and in the description box below so you can watch that one first and then come to this one because I'm gonna dive right in. I had such a great time with the first part and I'm excited to dive into the next one. So just to recap, at this point, I'm around eight pages for my synopsis. She usually does 15 to 25. I think I was saying that wrong in the other video so my apologies so she does 15 to 25 pages for her synopsis before sending to her editor I am around eight pages now and I'm gonna jump right in and work on it some more so I'm back I completed 10 pages for my full synopsis it's not quite 15 to 25 but I'm going to count it anyway my timeline is on a much tighter deadline in my book it counts Diving a little deeper into what I've been doing with my synopsis, I have been expanding the original three page synopsis. So I basically have been looking at the story as like a movie. I t I'm a very visual person, so I want to see the story unfold in my mind. Going through the synopsis and sort of just taking pieces from it, but expanding it a lot more. So I'm going through the full plot of the main character and also adding in the subplot. So this is a women's fiction novel. So relationships are really the focus in this book in particular. So the family dynamic with this character, including her father and her sister and her mother, and also the romantic relationship because you gotta have a little bit of romance. I'm including all of that and it's a lot of fun for me to kind of informally write the story instead of going right in and drafting and having to figure out dialogue and setting and things like that. I'm able to just get it all down and tweak and figure out where things fit in and where things don't fit in. So I'm having a lot of fun expanding it. So right now I'm going to take it back to my plotting group because they have been so helpful so far and I'm going to see if they have any tweaks or questions and I'll check in with you soon. So I'm back. I just finished my chat with my plotting group. Thank you so much, Katie and Belinda, again for all of your help. I'm so excited even more to write this story. Um, I find this process really, really invigorating and exciting to move forward. So they had some questions about clarification and sort of word changes and things like that. It wasn't a ton and they did give me a bit to think about. We had a discussion afterwards about just certain things to clarify. So I feel very confident and I am sending this off to my editor. Cross your fingers for me. I hope that she loves it and doesn't have too many questions about it at this point because as I said, my time is running out. So I wanted to share an awesome update with you. I heard back from my editor and she loves the story and she loves the synopsis. Whew. I wasn't too worried because she did like the earlier synopsis, but you know, there's always that chance. So she only had one query, which will be established when I start writing the book. So I have put her notes aside, which means I can jump into Susan's next step. She says when it's actually time to write the book, I take all the notes and snippets of paper and dive right in. I write a scene from each point of view character and then I start on my outline. So she says in her women's fiction book, she usually has three point of view characters that she has to weave together into one cohesive story. So for my book, I only have one point of view character, so I'm going to dive in and write from her point of view. I finished my scene from my point of view character. That was a lot of fun. My process for more recent books has been that mirror image at the beginning and at the end of the book. So I am a linear writer, which means I write from start to finish. I can't skip around. That first line, that first scene is very important and it seems to be very important for Susan's method as well. Usually when you read some books that have that opening image and the final image, they mirror each other in some way. You can see the progression of the character. So I, what I did is I really picture that last scene in the book where I wanted my character to be. And then I sort of flipped it on its head and brought it back the opposite way for the first scene in the book. I'm not going to say any spoilers. That was 
another check mark for me that was very successful and I feel very good about it. So the next step for Susan is to write a scene by scene outline for her books. And I did end up looking at one of her older YouTube videos, which sort of sparked this idea to begin with. She does about three scenes per chapter and writes them out on little note cards. Well, I have never found the note card method to work for me, but I did open a Scrivener document and, and wrote a chapter header and then three scenes. I no I've i never really mapped it out before how many scenes I write per chapter, but this was very interesting to me because it gave me the basis of having sort of a beginning, middle, and end for a chapter and then leading into the next chapter, which I thought was very interesting. So this morning I had so much inspiration that I was able to write nine out of the ten chapters that I want to do for today. I averaged out how many words about I want for my book and I'm aiming toward an 80,000 word book. So it's about 26 chapters with around 3,000 words per chapter. So leading up to November, which I do want to start drafting this in November, I have about three days. So today I'm doing 10 chapters, tomorrow I'm doing 10 chapters, and then I'm doing six chapters on Thursday. I'm cutting it kind of close here. Um, Susan really, really spends a lot of time with the prep process prior to writing. I will check in with you when that's done. I'm back and I'm done with my scene by scene outline. I actually finished it a lot sooner than I expected. I'm so excited. The story just flowed and there was maybe one spot where I was a little stuck for a few minutes but the prep that I had done beforehand with the synopsis was a game changer. So I was able to quickly jump back into the story, figure out where I was stuck and then keep going. Instead of 26 chapters, I ended up outlining 29 chapters worth of scenes. So I sort of stuck close to Susan's scene list, which was three scenes per chapter. And I added an extra three chapters. So this overall process has been so great. I did want to add a little tidbit that she added to the end of the email just to have the full perspective of this process. She gave me a frame of reference, her current women's fiction project, which she projected to be about 110,000 words. She said that her plotting was about 18,000 words. So it's pretty extensive. Mine is not even close to that, but the actual process is the same. And I'm so happy I did this. I'm so grateful to Susan Mallory for allowing me to dive deep into her process. And I'm so grateful that she actually got back to me regarding her most current process. So I would love to know if you learned anything, if you are interested in adding any of her methods to your plotting methods or your prep methods for your next novel. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like and hit that subscribe button and a little notification bell next to it so you know the next time I post a video. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this where I sort of follow someone else's process, do let me know and if you have any suggestions. This was sort of a whim for me, but I really enjoyed following someone else's process. I hope this has inspired you in some way as it has inspired me and I will see you soon.